Hello and welcome back to Anton Math and the video More Trigonometric Equations Part 3. Let's go ahead and jump in. It's more of what we've been doing in the last several videos, only now we're going to need to use trigonometric identities to solve these problems. So first, 2 cosine squared theta plus sine theta is equal to 1. So let's take a look. Now I have a cosine squared and a sine. I know I need to get this into a form that I can factor it or manipulate it so that I have a product on the left hand side and zero on the right hand side. So the easiest way for us to do this first, we notice this is kind of like a quadratic. I have a cosine squared and a sine theta. This would be a quadratic equation if I had a sine here instead of a cosine. Well, we have an identity for that, our Pythagorean identity, so I can go ahead and plug in. I know that cosine squared theta is the same as 1 minus sine squared theta. And I still have this plus sine theta. And I want the right hand side to equal 0. So I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. I'll get minus 1 is equal to 0. Now let's go ahead and simplify a little bit. 2 times negative sine squared theta is a negative 2 sine squared theta. I still have this plus sine theta, and I have negative 1 plus 2, so this is plus 1 is equal to 0. Now I don't like having that negative out in front. We know when we solve these quadratic equations we like to get rid of those negatives, and that's pretty easy to do here. I'm just going to multiply both sides of this equation by negative 1. So this negative 2 becomes a positive 2 sine squared theta. This positive sine theta becomes negative sine theta. This positive 1 becomes negative 1, and on the right hand side I have negative 0, which of course is still just 0. So now we're in a great position. Now I can factor. So I'm going to factor 2 sine squared theta minus sine theta minus 1. Now factoring this problem, I know that one of my blocks is going to have 2 sine theta. I know that the other block is going to have sine theta. Right, these are my only options for factoring 2 sine theta. They're both going to have a 1 here. And because it's a negative 1 in my quadratic, I know that I have a plus sign in one of, these, uh, one of these factors, and I have a minus sign in the other factor. And the way we figure it out is I have a negative sign in the middle, so I know I need to have a negative here and a plus here. That way when I get the central term, I get a negative 2 sine plus 1 sign, which gives me a negative sign. So now we're done factoring, we have that this product is equal to 0. Now of course we have a product on the left and a 0 on the right, so this product is only equal to 0 when one of the factors of the product is equal to 0. So now we can turn this into two different problems. I want to know when is 2 sine theta plus 1 equal to 0, and when is sine theta minus 1 equal to 0. The, the values for theta in which these two smaller equations now are equal to zero are going to be the same values of theta that this product is equal to zero. So we can look at this left one first, um, working this out so that we can isolate sine theta, we get that sine of theta is equal to, now I've subtracted one from both sides and divided both sides by two, so this is negative one half. And I know that sine of theta is equal to negative one half when theta is equal to seven pi over six. So that's that uh, first uh, angle of pi over six, or this is the angle that has reference number pi over six, or reference angle pi over six, and is located in quadrant three. Now I need the angle with reference angle pi over 6 that's located in quadrant 4, the other place where sine is negative. So that's going to give me that theta equals 11 pi over 6, so just pi over 6 shy of 2 pi. And I have, from this side, I have sine of theta at minus 1 is 0, so that means sine of theta equals 1, and we know sine of theta only equals 1 at one point, and that's when theta equals pi over 2. I should say at one point uh, within a single period theta equals pi over 2. So now these are our three solutions and these are all of our solutions of one period of theta, uh, one period between 0 and 2 pi, 
So if I add 2k pi to all of these, where k is an integer, we now have all possible solutions for theta, all infinitely many of them. But we've pinpointed exactly where they are. OK, let's take a look at another one. 2 sine 2 theta minus 3 sine theta is equal to 0. Now whenever you see sine or cosine of 2 theta, that should scream to you double angle formulas. right? We have a formula for it. It's the double angle formula. So I'm going to plug in this double angle formula. I know that sine 2 theta is equal to 2 sine theta cosine theta right? from my double angle formula. And I have minus 3 sine theta is equal to 0. So I'm going to do some factoring and some simplifying. This 2 times 2 is 4, but I'm going to factor out a sine from my first term and a sine from my second term. I don't have any powers of 2 here, so we're not going to need to factor like a quadratic, but we can factor out the common factor of all our terms, which here is sine theta. Now after I factor out a sine theta, this first term becomes 2 times 2, or 4 cosine theta. And I factored out a sine theta over here. So I have 4 cosine theta minus 3. And this is all equal to 0. So now I have a product equal to 0. I can split this up. I'm looking at when sine theta equals 0 and when 4 cosine theta minus 3 is equal to 0. Right? Whenever either of these are equal to 0, then anything that I multiplied to them is also equal to 0. In other words, this product is 0. So that's going to give us our set of all solutions. Now sine of theta is equal to 0 when theta is equal to 0 or is equal to pi or any increments coterminal with 0 to pi. So I can write that as 0 plus k pi or simply k pi. Now over here, we need to simplify a little bit. 4 cosine theta minus 3 equals 0. That's the same as cosine of theta is equal to 3 over 4. So now this isn't one of the numbers that we're familiar with. So I need to go ahead and plug in cosine inverse of theta. Let's go ahead and do this a little bit up here. So I'm getting this theta, sorry, cosine inverse of 3 fourths. Theta is equal to cosine inverse of 3 fourths, which is about equal to 0 0.72. And now I have this theta. I also need to look at 2 pi minus theta. Right? This is my angle in quadrant 1, where cosine is 3 fourths. But I also have an angle in quadrant 4, where cosine is 3 fourths. And that angle has the same reference number theta. In other words, the reference number is 0.72. So we can find it exactly by 2 pi minus theta, which in this case is about equal to 5.56. So in addition to k pi, I also have in my general solution theta equals 0 0.72 plus 2k pi, and theta equals 5.56 plus 2k pi where k is an arbitrary integer. All right, and here's our general solution. All right, one more for this video. We'll have a couple more videos still where we're going to do some more of these examples. But this is the last one for this video. Sine theta minus 1 is equal to cosine theta. Now this one can be a little bit tricky. Um, at first glance, it doesn't seem like that difficult of a problem, but if you take a second to look at it, you'll see there's not really anything that we can do to solve this problem with any of the identities that we've learned in the course so far. Uh, now, whenever you get into this kind of situation where there's not really anything to do, uh, we can't apply the identity directly when we're given the problem, uh, there's nothing that looks like it's going to work, uh, as a last resort, we can always try to set up a way um, 
to set up this equation in a way where we can square both sides to get one of our identities. Now this is a last resort because we have to do some extra work at the end whenever we do this and, and we'll see that when we get there in a moment. So let's go ahead and square both sides of this. So my left hand side is going to be sine theta minus 1 squared and my right hand side becomes cosine squared theta. Okay, now I have some identities I can use. Uh, the left hand side, I don't need to use any identities, I'm just going to go ahead and expand it out and I get sine squared theta minus 2 sine theta plus 1 and on the right hand side I can use my Pythagorean identity now for cosine squared and I get 1 minus sine squared theta. Alright, I'm going to put everything on the left side so I have a, I'm adding sine squared theta to both sides, so I'm going to have 2 sine squared theta. I still have this minus 2 sine theta. And I had a plus 1, and I subtracted 1 from both sides, so my 1's cancel, and I get that this is equal to 0. And now we're in a good situation. Now we can go ahead and factor out um, and get our product of expressions to equal 0. So I'll go ahead and factor out a 2 sine theta and I get 2 sine theta times sine theta minus 1 is equal to 0. Now let's go ahead and find the solutions of one period. Um, looking at 2 sine theta equals 0 first. Well, if 2 sine theta equals 0, I can just divide both sides by 2, and I get sine of theta equals 0. And then my solutions of one period here are going to be theta is equal to 0 and pi. These are the two places between 0 and 2 pi, um, not including 2 pi because that's just going to repeat 0 for us, where sine of theta is equal to 0. Now looking at the other part of the equation, I have sine of theta minus 1 equals 0, so sine of theta equals 1. And we know sine of theta only equals 1 in one place, and that's when theta is equal to pi over 2. So now naturally we would want to go 0 plus 2k pi, pi plus 2k pi, and actually these combine together into just pi, or into just k pi really. Um, and then we'd want to look at pi over 2 plus 2k pi. But before we do that, whenever we square both sides of an equation, we have to check for what are called extraneous solutions. And let me illustrate how this happens in a, in a simpler problem first, and then we'll come back and take a look at how to finish this up. Let's say that I have this equation x equals 1. Now, of course, this is trivial to solve. We just know that, well, this actually is in the uh, form of a solution already. But let's say I had this equation and I squared both sides. So my left side becomes x squared. My right side is 1 squared, which is just 1. And now let's say I want to solve this equation. So I take the square root of both sides and I get x is equal to plus or minus 1. In other words, my solutions are x equals 1 and x equals negative 1. So this x equals negative 1 is what we call an extraneous solution. Both of these are solutions to the equation that was formed when I squared the original equation, and all the solutions from my original equation are also solutions of the equation created when I squared both sides, but the equation where I squared both sides, or after I squared both sides, has extraneous solutions. It has solutions that are not solutions of my original equation. We see that's right here, this x equals negative 1. And the way that we check for extraneous solutions is we find all, all our solutions of the new equation that we got from squaring both sides, and we plug them back into our original equation. So here if I plug in x equals 1 into my original equation, I get 1 equals 1, so I'm good to go. x equals 1 is a solution. If I plug in x equals negative 1, I'm going to get negative 1 equals 1. So this is my extraneous solution. This is not actually a solution to my original equation, even though it was a solution to my adjusted equation after I squared both sides. All right, so let's go ahead back to our problem and take a look. I have these three solutions of one period, but before I start adding 2k pi to them, I need to plug them back into my original equation, this one up top here in purple, and see if they're all actually solutions. So let's try when theta equals pi over 2. When theta equals pi over 2, I have sine of pi over 2 minus 1 equals cosine of pi over 2. Now we want to evaluate this and just verify that both sides are indeed equal to each other. 
Now sine of pi over 2 is 1, so I have 1 minus 1, and cosine of pi over 2 is 0, so that's just 0 equals 0. So pi over 2 is a solution. Now let's look at theta equals pi. When theta equals pi, I have sine of pi minus 1 is equal to cosine of pi. Now sine of pi is 0, so I have 0 minus 1 on the left, and cosine of pi is negative 1. So we're okay here as well, aren't we? We get negative 1 is equal to negative 1. So pi is also a solution in one period. But when we look at theta equals 0, I'm going to get sine of 0 minus 1 is equal to cosine of 0. Now sine of 0 is 0, so I have 0 minus 1 on the left hand side, but cosine of 0 is positive 1. So here we get negative 1 equals positive 1, so that's bad. This is our extraneous solution. So theta equals 0 is a solution to the equation after I squared both sides, but it is not a solution to the original equation that we started with. Okay, so our final answer for this problem is just theta equals, we're going to use all the solutions that we checked and found were not extraneous. So theta equals pi plus 2k pi and theta equals pi over 2 plus 2k pi where k of course is an arbitrary integer. So this is our final solution. So we have to be careful. Um, we can square both sides and sometimes we need to in order to be able to apply our identities and solve the problem. We just have to be careful to watch out for those extraneous solutions. If you square both sides and then solve the problem as normal, you're going to get at least one, but in some cases two or three extra solutions that aren't actually solutions from our original equation. Alright, that's it for this video. Uh, we'll see you for some more examples in the next video.